Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 23rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Stockholm, Germany, but virtually teaching in London, England. This weekend, we had some malware analysis tricks from Xavier. First of all, how to wait for a command control server that's not readily available. I've seen this happen sometimes where, well, a malware campaign is getting too successful and the command control server is overwhelmed with requests. Sometimes, of course, these command control servers also shut down and then it takes a while for them to show up at, for example, a different IP address. So Xavier is going over how to patch the malware to continue to wait and attempt to connect to a particular command control server in order to figure out how the malware exactly works. And in a second malware related diary, DDA is presenting a Word document that included an executable. This may be a little bit uh, not very well thought through attempt at social engineering to sort of bypass some of the issues that you have with Visual Basic macros. That's of course still the preferred way to execute code, but users, malware analysis tools or uh, malware protection tools are of course uh, pretty aware of this technique now so here they tried a straight executable however as Didi experienced this does not actually appear to work in any reasonably new version of office or word it looks to the user like the user would open an excel spreadsheet but the word did recognize that it wasn't executable and prevent the user from launching it. So maybe a user that really wants to get infected will be able to somehow save the executable in a separate file and uh, be able to execute it then, but wouldn't be as straightforward as just clicking on the Excel logo in the Word document. Recently, Microsoft released Windows 365. The idea of the product is to run a Windows 10 and in the future, a Windows 11 system in the cloud and no longer really have any Windows physical hardware to deal with. The product has been quite popular and Microsoft now released a security guide or at least a blog post telling you about some of the security features of Windows 365. Good news here, it's not really all that terribly difficult or different uh, from a normal uh, physical uh, PC. Windows is still Windows, even if it runs in the cloud. They distinguish sort of a small business uh, version and what features you would use in that scenario, and then the sort of enterprise scenario. Also, one note they point out here, trusted launch. Uh, this feature that requires TPM 2.0 is not available right now for Windows 365, but Windows 11, of course, will require the feature and they will have it ready uh, once Windows 11 is widely released. And of course, it hackers never miss a good news story in order uh, to build a scam around it. The latest is the Pegasus spyware. Pegasus spyware uh, was used or was uh, produced by the NSO group and uh, recently made the news in being used to spy on activists, journalists and the like by various uh, governments. Apparently, there are now some extortion emails that try to obtain additional credibility by using the or mentioning the Pegasus uh, spyware as a hook in order to gain that additional credibility. The email is very similar to others where someone is claiming that they had access to your system and are asking for some amount of money in order to release the data. But well, they're saying that they gained access to your system via the Pegasus spyware. And if you are using Office 365 and responsible for logging in Office 365, take a quick look at a blog post by Rick Van Duyen from Solder. 
That blog post summarizes some important sort of caveats uh, with Office 365 logging. Uh, not a long read, it's pretty uh, short and to the point, uh, so certainly worth your time to take a quick look at this. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.